Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss the square well, which is one of the paradigm problems in quantum mechanics. So, what do we mean by the square well? Well, this is one dimensional, so the problem is the particle is moving on the line, but we're going to restrict ourselves to a finite interval, say 0 to a, where the potential is 0 in that interval, like a free particle, but it's infinite outside that interval. So the equation makes no sense outside that interval. All right, so the time-independent Schrodinger equation for the square well in, in that interval 0 to a is given by this equation 245 and we can solve that equation. You, you, uh, forget about the uh, um, distracting looking constants. You solved this equation the first year when you did ODEs, elementary ODEs. And there are three possibilities for the solutions e less than 0 e equals 0 and e greater than 0. Verify to yourself that these are solutions because these types of solutions are going to come up in this chapter over and over and over. Now, one of the things I forgot to say is that we will take boundary conditions. The wave function must vanish at the boundaries. It's 0 at the boundaries. So, if we take these, this solution for these three values of energy, what we find is that for E less than or equal to zero, so the top two cases, the only way the boundary conditions can be satisfied is if A equal B equal zero. So there's no solution, in other words. For E greater than zero, if we satisfy the boundary conditions, we get a equals 0 and this other condition, which implies that we're only going to have non-trivial or non-zero solutions when E is E n, which is n squared pi squared h bar squared over 2 m a squared for n equal 1, starting at 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. This is a fascinating result because it says two things. One is it says energy can only occur in discrete, discrete units. It's quantized. And it says that there is no zero in energy. Energy can never be zero. All right. So the general form of the wave function looks like this. And if we go back to this, we have a equals 0. We have this value. We plug in the values for e that we've just come up with. And we have this constant out in front, which we're assuming may vary with n. Normalize. So we demand that the integral of the modulus squared of the wave function in the domain must be 1. We can easily check through that calculation and you find that the nth eigenstate, eigenstate corresponding to the nth eigenvalue is given by this expression. And if we want to put in the time dependence, that's easy to do and we can do that here. So linearity of the Schrodinger equation, think back to the first lecture in this chapter, means that the general solution is a sum over the eigenstates with the appropriate 
time dependent factor depending on the eigenvalue, energy eigenvalue, and we have a constant out front, Cn. We can compute the expansion coefficients in this way by setting t equals zero and then computing the inverse by orthogonality essentially. And the important thing to realize, summarizing, is that for the square well, we have these eigenvalues, discrete eigenvalues, greater than zero strictly, with corresponding eigenfunctions of this form. The general solution of the time dependent Schrodinger equation can be written in this form. All right. We want to explore this a little bit further, but first let's look at interpretation of the wave function for the square well in terms of the dynamics of a quantum particle moving in the square well. Well, the first thing we need um, to look at is the probability density. And let's simplify matters to begin with by looking at the probability density corresponding to the nth eigenstate. We'll come back to that and look at more general eigenstates in a little bit. But the probability density corresponding to the nth eigenstate is given by 259. We use a little trig identity on the right. And therefore, if we want to compute the probability of finding a particle between x equals 0 in some other value, uppercase x, less than or equal to a, we just integrate the probability density from 0 to uppercase x. To be more specific, if we want to look at the probability of finding the particle in a specific integral, interval, say between a over 4 and 3a over 4, we just integrate the probability density between those two values we get an interesting expression. The mean position of the particle, we integrate the position variable against the probability density over the entire domain, 0 to a, and we get a over 2. So on average, the particle is going to be at the midpoint of the well. Kind of intuitively clear, but uh, be careful with intuition and quantum mechanics. And the variance can be computed, and we'll see what that's useful for later. So note that the general time-dependent solution of the Schrodinger equation for the square well is a linear superposition or linear combination. And if we plug in the specific values for psi n and e n, that gives us this fancy expression or complicated looking expression on the right. If we use orthogonality, the probability density for the entire general wave function, we just square this and use the fact that, I didn't say this earlier, but this is should be familiar to you, psi n and psi m, well I did say it, form an orthonormal set. They're eigenfunctions of a self-adjoint operator. We'll verify that again shortly. So they are orthogonal. Now they're orthonormal. And we can use orth orthogonality and get this expression for the probability density. Now what we end up with at the very end is quite important, that this is the sum of the squares of the amplitude. Okay. And if we require normalization, which we always do, the sum of the squares of the amplitudes for a general solution, go back and look at this closely and the amplitudes, I know I'm going quickly, leads to the following interpretation. And this is very important. The probability of measuring the energy to be En, or equivalently of finding the particle to be in the nth eigenstate, psi n of x, is Cn squared. Uh, this 28 is annoying, 
because it doesn't mean c into the 28th, mod c into the 20th, it means mod c in squared, but there is a margin note that's number 8, and I give you a little extra information, so careful there. Okay, that's the end of what we're going to do on the square well for today. Now we have a lot of further applications. We're going to explore the structure of the Schrodinger equation in more detail for this square well. We're going to beat the square well to death. It's a fundamental paradigm type problem that you're going to know and love by the end of this course, or the, this chapter for sure. Anyway, that's all for today. And next time, we are going to discuss probability current and the conservation of probability. I, you know, in the last lecture, I, let a, I had a little uh, slip and said, all these implications will flow from these, this interpretation of the wave function as a probability density, or the magnitude squared as a probability density. This is where the analogy with flow really becomes clear. And this is, a, this is a topic I like very much. So, until next time, see you.